Welcome to Moments of Truth. I'm so happy to have you here. And let me tell <clears throat> a few words why Moments of Truth are so important for Toastmasters. As a trio member, I'm very happy together with Stefan and Katarina to interview candidates for international director. We had round about 25 interviews. They are now over for this year, so I'm allowed to tell you one of the questions. We asked the candidates, tell us your secret about sustainability and growth at the same time. And it was not surprised that maybe 80% of them answered the same and it's moments of truth. That's why this topic is extremely important and I'm very happy to have you here and also very happy that you watch the recording right now, fellow Toastmaster or guest. So, of course, <clears throat> I have presentation for you. So let me share it. Here we go. And let's go to the full screen. Yes, talking about moments of truth, let's go to real life, the life where we have no Toastmasters, but our work, our family, and the person we love. I will show you two situations, and I challenge you to search for the differences in the both situations who are very similar, but with a very, very different result. The first one is here. Wonderful young guy with a ring asking a girl, will you marry me? The girl is obviously very, very surprised and answers, oh, maybe, or I don't know, or please ask Patricia, <laughs> or ask me again tomorrow, my dear, or hmm. I'm sure this is not the dream situation for the guy and also for the girl. And when I look at this picture, obviously, this guy is maybe not perfect prepared. Take a look at the place. It's, it doesn't look like a special place. Take a look at the ground behind both of them. It's so dirty. And I can understand that the girl doesn't feel very comfortable right now. It's the message from the guy. And obviously the girl is surprised, not prepared. And they are not, not on the same page about feelings. Let's have a similar situation once again. Will you marry me? There is a river, wonderful flowers. And when you take a look at the water, you will see the mirror, uh, mirroring a bridge behind them. And the girl is so happy. They are dressed, both dressed for success. So she's able just to be surprised, to enjoy the moment and to say yes. Fellow Toastmasters and guests watching this video, I have good news for you today. At Toastmasters, there is a manual for everything, literally for everything. As soon as you have a new role, issue, something to organize, something to facilitate, whatever, I promise you, you will find a handbook for it. And most of the Handbooks are collected in a Google Drive. You see two links. I will copy my presentation very soon in the chat. So don't worry to write them down. Uh, in the, the first link leads you to many resources for club officers. And the second one to our magic topic, Moments of Truth. And I have a second very good message for you today. As an international organization, we are, we are very well organized to exchange information. And Toastmasters is the perfect place to, le to learn from others. So today I'm gonna invite you to exchange some ideas about moments of truth so you can benefit the experience of the others. And first, let me shortly introduce you moments of truth. Um, there is a short version like this one, and there are six very important topics. First, impressions. That means how someone feels when he or she uh, sees your club for the first time on the web, on a 
poster or at your club. Then program planning and meeting organization. How is your club running the regular meetings? Membership orientation. When a person signs, so she said, yes, I will. <laughs> I will, I want to be part of your club. How do you orient the new members? Another very important topic in uh, difficult Corona times is membership strength. Of course, fellowship, variety and communication and last but not least achievement recognition. And now I will show you briefly the six points so we can discuss after that on the six points and exchange our experience. First impressions. Do you remember your first visit at a Toastmaster club? Most likely it was positive experience. And if not, it was not bad enough to make you not joining the organization. So your first club could be a very good uh, example for first impressions. So just look back and uh, yeah, try to find out why, why you joined. Do you have a guest book in your club asking the guests about impressions or wishes or quotes? It's a wonderful method to make them feel um, heard where they are. Is the room or the Zoom room or whatever arranged professionally? What about a meeting location? If you do hybrid meetings, what do your online guests see and hear? And so on. As you see, all these points are endless. This is just a quality tool to help you make your club better. I think perfection is not possible. Um, it's not possible to achieve perfection, but this is the wonderful tool to do it better and better and better. Program planning and meeting organization. Is the agenda published? For example, many clubs have a link to the Easy Speak agenda on their web pages. That means every person who is interested in Toastmaster can automatically see what they do. Do, they, do the members know who is responsible for what? Are all projects part of menus? We have now Pathways as our official um, education program without the legacy program. And most projects begin with present any speech on. That means it's on you to decide what you wish to present, but please use a manual. And the vice president education and the board is responsible to empower the members to do that. Do you start and end on time? Because as a leader, you are a great example for guests and members. Are your table topics creatives? And so on. The next point, membership orientation. As soon as someone says yes to your club, what's next? Do you have onboarding papers? Do you assign mentor? Is there a possibility to take a role at the next meeting? You see, there are many, many points and I empower you and your clubs to find your best way to manage new members. The next point is regarding club growth. It's always good to have 20 or more. Actually, 30 is the new 20. I highly recommend you 30 members because in case some of them are on holiday or you or on a very important project at work, you will still have enough Toastmasters for an interesting and high quality program. Do you retain members? What's the average uh, Toastmasters age of your members? That could be very interesting to find out. And are Toastmasters in your club sponsoring new members, new clubs? Are they presenting at neighbor clubs? Are they interested to become area director, division director, district leader, and so on? For example, today there was invitation for persons to apply as region advisor. Someday uh, you can ask yourself, do I wish to serve eight or nine districts as a region advisor and train them? I hope someday we will have a region advisor from, your, from our district. 
Then fellowship, variety, and communication. My favorite is going to eat something after the Toastmasters meeting in person. Then you can socialize. The board can ask new members or guests um, how they are doing, what are their jobs and interests. Actually, this is also an endless point. Do you have interesting events, also inter-club events? Does your club host an area contest or COT sometimes, or maybe an official contest just to practice, or maybe interesting table topics event somewhere in the middle of your city or town, or of course the endless possibilities of online uh, meetings. And then last but not least, achievement recognition. Now doing a few projects, you're gonna be on the next pathways level, but how is the club recognizing that? Do you receive um, something on the stage from the VPE or from the president? Maybe you wish to buy small ribbons from the Toastmasters International shop, or maybe you would like to create your own charts or your own certificates. Do you mention sometimes DCP in front of your club? For example, when the president or another pre presiding officer opens and closes meeting, they can use the chance to mention levels, DCP um, recognitions and so on. You see, there are also endless possibilities to act here. And now talking about endless possibilities, let's have an exercise. The exercise, actually, I can show you one more slide before we start the exercise. Let's do following. You will be randomly assigned to a Zoom room, number one to four. And I will copy now this link in the chat. Um, this link leads to a Word document, Google Word document, where you will see the numbers of the groups one to four. Go down, I will show you also the, this Word document so you can imagine how it looks. Just give me a second. I have the document here, just need to share it with you. For example, if you are group number three, your topic is fellowship, variety and communication. And together with your group mate, you scroll to page number three and brainstorm for 15 minutes best practices from your club or from clubs you saw, visited or heard about. Just write best practices about these points and at the end of the 15 minutes decide about two to three points you really love. Because one person per group can present in one to two minutes uh, your favorite point. And at the end of the day, we're going to have perfect brainstorming. You can download and you will also have uh, the best points in short presentations. Now, let me copy the link in the chat because it's very, very important. And please give me a sign if you are able to open the document. Perfect. Perfect. It's enough if one person per group is able to uh, open it. Very important, please write your point. You can, of course, take your time to discuss, but the most important thing is to write them down because after that, everyone will receive every point. So it will be a very interesting document for everyone. Is there any question? Is the um, exercise clear? 15 minutes. You'll see the number of your group, brainstorm. And after that, every group can present one to two minutes. OK, wonderful. I will switch between the rooms and support you if needed, or just say hello and to bring you some cola and popcorn so you can, you can have fun. OK, wonderful. Let's go for the breakout rooms now. Perfect.
Perfect. Our participants are working hard and in a few seconds, I will start a countdown, one minute, and then we'll hear the presentations, one to two minutes about the four topics. I'm very curious to hear them. Now let's go to breakout sessions and stop all sessions. Now the countdown is running and we'll have one minute. Welcome back, dear Elizabeth. Your mic is off. But we can't write. We can't write in the form anymore. Oh, uh, if you wish, you can um, make. No, I can. No, I can. On paper. Okay. We live chocolates. I heard about some technical difficulties, Leona, but now it seems to work. Yeah, Elizabeth just popped up. Out. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. I disappeared. I didn't. I think the time was up, Leona. Yeah, there was yes. almost a minute left. But uh, no worries. We can start with another group. I will start with number two and uh, make them three, four, and then you number one at the end. So you have time to arrange your points. No worries. Amazing. Welcome back. Welcome back, everyone. This is my favorite moment on Zoom when you are interrupted in the middle of the sentence. And it's a good sign. It's the sign that you have a lot to say, a lot to exchange. And now let's take a sh very short look at the next slide. Now it's on you to present. I saw between, I don't know, five and 10 points per group. And that's, of course, wonderful. Now I'm very curious to hear your short presentations. Uh, group one had a small technical issue, so they still need a minute. Um, who would like uh, to volunteer to start for a group with a short presentation? I'm not going to time it. And let me say you why. You had a lot of table topics. And I, I trust in the biological clock in your head. So a few, one to two minutes. I will interrupt you in maybe 10 minutes or what, but uh, please don't use uh, all 10 minutes. Do it in one or two minutes. Who wishes to start? I'm happy to start with Fellowship Variety Communication. Amazing. Andreas, let's go. And how much time do I have for this? One to two minutes. And One if, two you minutes. Feel, okay. if you feel you need more, just do, do more. Are you sure about this? You know, we are at Toastmasters and timing is key. So I'd love to see a timer showing me the red light after two minutes. OK, I will do. OK, <laughs> Good. I will do. Yeah. So imagine a situation where your club, the members in your club do feel so much camaraderie that they like to meet for a hiking tour and a weekend in the mountains every year where not only your Toastmasters your home club is present but also members from other Toastmasters clubs in your region are there hiking event weekend in the mountains that's the top 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 thing that we came up with when it comes to fellowship if this is not possible and when we are back in physical meetings, of course, just go to the bar afterwards, let the alcohol flow and let people meet each other, get to know each other, make friends, and with this create loyalty to the group and to your club. Of course, in virtual times, this is not possible that we can go to the bar, but we can meet before and after, maybe with a beer, maybe with a glass of wine, Yes, too much screen time is tiring. So this has to be limited, but it is possible. And the golden way that we came up with is, and here I'm really on a mission. I'd like to encourage every Toastmasters club that I'm involved in that they put something into their standard easy speak agenda, which is the warm up round, a three to four minute warm up round where everybody has the opportunity to speak to feel part of the group, to 
answer a simple question, of course, a private one. The Toastmasters meeting that I attended today was in a corporate club where the Toastmasters of the day asked everybody to share what they will do this weekend. And this gives everybody the opportunity to share something private so people in the just in the regular meeting time get to know each other they know private things about each other with this we believe that you can create fellowship and loyalty to your group thank you very much applause from mr geiger from switzerland who would like to be next such a wonderful ideas wow who would like to be next I, I can be next. Please, Denise. No, sorry, topic? I saw someone had, okay. Our topic was membership orientation. And we agreed that there are many ways that we can mentor new members. So there is the regular dedicated mentor, but there are also other possibilities where all members give support to the new members. And a third way would be that the VP ed gives more assistance. And the important thing in all of these is that the new member knows that there is a channel for them where they can uh, clear their questions and ask for support, but also um, having the more experienced members show that they are really uh, interested in supporting new people so that they find out how things work. Another thing we discussed was about the reward system and education program, because there are also, as in other things, we, we found different ways of going about this. And in this case, there's the possibility of having presentations, a meeting where there's a presentation where this is discussed, so everyone knows about it. But there are also the other ways that in the regular meetings, people get to know, oh, Yes, someone gets recognized at the end of the meeting because they achieved a new level. And then maybe there's a discussion about something in the education program so that people also get in touch with these informations. So, and yeah, so these are, are the two of the main issues that we discussed them of. Thank you very much. I'm really enjoying being table topic master for moments of truth even if they are not the pure table topics where you're not prepared, but uh, 15 minutes preparation for a table topic uh, works fine. We still have group one and group four, who is ready to jump on the virtual stage. Dear Manuel. Uh, we had group four, program planning and meeting organization. Um, we decided for the point that the VP education and Toastmasters of the day try a uh, very hard, big time, uh, try to plan the day in advance to have all roads and speeches filled and completely. Yeah? Also, try to have it uh, for the next meeting and the next, next meeting because it's easier. And oftentimes, these are first time role takers. Yeah. If you have the role of Toastmasters of the day for the first time, it can be a very challenging task. And if you have big assistance from VP education, it gets a little bit easier. Um, this advances to um, having replacement speakers to address last minute cancellations of speakers. Yeah. We had that. And for example, if you have, uh, three speaking slots and one slot falls away, then it's uh, still possible to save that third speaking slot. And next point is know the communication preference of your members. Um, it's sometimes the case that members do not react to emails or any kind of written message, but they will react to telephone calls. And um, then they are super friendly and make and do it all. <laughs> and. Uh, Thirdly, um, um, give a workshop for presenting effective evaluations because um, some members are hesitant to give evaluations because they think it's such a big task and super difficult. So help them by giving a workshop for doing effective evaluations. That's, this concludes my speech. 
Thank you very much. Wow, very informative and so true with the different channels. So true. Now, last but not least, we have group number one with immediate part district director Elizabeth and area director Leona. I've added a couple of more things in the meantime, Leona. Do you want to share them or do shall I go ahead? Uh, go ahead. It doesn't matter for me. I'm easy to. Um, one of the things, because we had the first question um, coming into the first impressions, and we think that that is just so important, really, that the the lighting is not, this is now in presence, but likewise with hybrid, are things all working? Is the, is the sound there? Can we see the people in the room if we're calling in from online in a hybrid meeting? These impressions, if technically it doesn't work, then hybrid is not an opportunity for guests to enjoy the meeting, is, our, is definitely my opinion. Um, but in presence, we do a lot to make sure that the first impressions are really genuinely warmed, welcomed to the guests, that they are invited to breakout rooms or the VP membership and club president VP Ed are assigned to speak to them in the break if it's in presence. One thing we noticed uh, for newbies, newbie guests is very important for the president when they say welcome, and introduce things to remember that many of our guests have no, never been to a meeting before. So often we just jump in and expect them to play along and they haven't got a clue what's, 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 what's moving, things don't get described, um, the, the evening is not discussed, the succession of what is going to happen. So they don't have a clue and we feel that the president should be very aware when they have newbie guests. Sometimes of course guests come again and then it's okay. And then um, introduction and farewell to guests is really important. We feel that they are asked. Um, that, um, Andrea suggested that, that everyone gets to speak, but when you're a big club like ours, for example, with 35, we can't go through four minutes with everyone to say introduction. It just doesn't work. All our social event happens after the meeting. So um, we, we always ask guests how they found us and if they enjoyed the evening at the end. And I think this is essential to get guests to like it. And um, one of the last things at the end I wrote, club business can often be a little bit boring for guests. This is a first impression when people start saying, who's going to do a speech next week and no one says, yes, I will. Then I feel that guests don't really like that. I think it's important that we get we train our members to go on to easy speak so that this doesn't have to get discussed in an actual club meeting. And if we do online, then I think the guests should be given the opportunity or the choice to then leave ahead of time, just so that they know this is now club internal business and they don't have to stay. I think we often forget uh, to, um, to give our guests the opportunity to make a decision there themselves. Thank you so much, dear Elizabeth. It's such a wonderful feeling to benefit your great experience as a club and district leader. Fellow Toastmasters, we are close to the end, even if this topic is wonderful and literally endless. You can always improve your club. Imagine- Stefan, can I, can I quickly say something on the warm up round? Because absolutely. this is so close to my heart. And I'm happy to repeat. So in the Easy Speak agenda, there are three to four minutes mm -hmm. max. And it's an, like an art for the Toastmaster of today to make sure that it's not longer than three to four minutes. So this means the Toastmaster of today has to allow people to speak and move on to the next person very quickly. Mm -hmm. So everybody, they have the chance to say their name and uh, then one to two sentences max. When they speak longer, it's the obligation of the Toastmaster today to interrupt them and ask the next person to speak. This is only possible when you have 12, 14 people in the room, then everybody can speak. It's not possible when there are more people. So then again, responsibility for a Toastmaster today to only ask people that do not have a meeting role. Mm -hmm. And then just one more thing that is really important, that is very important to me, Oftentimes, too often, I see that only the guests at the very beginning are asked to introduce themselves. So imagine 
you <laughs> consider joining a Toastmasters club for years, then you do that first step and then you are sitting or speaking in a, in a, in front of a group of strangers and you are the only person to introduce yourself. So avoid this, ask when there is a big crowd of 30 people, three, four, five people, including the guests to say their name, answer a quick, funny question. That's a warm up round, but not too long. When it's too long, uh, energy drops. It's not a good idea. Mm -hmm. um, again, brief the Toastmasters of the day because it's an art of conducting these warm up rounds. Applause <laughs> for Andreas. Thank you so much. This is my personal moment of truth for today when the fellow Toastmasters are not able to stop and think about moments of truth. Thank you so much. Let me, this, that's the spirit we need. Please bring exactly this spirit to your club, your area, your division, your Toastmasters International. And now let me please summarize. Imagine you are an area director and you go to your club and present moments of truth. It could be in conversation, presentation, whatever. Just present it in an interesting way. And then ask them a few weeks later if, if they understand it, if they have questions. And imagine what could happen. Today, I'm happy to host eight highly motivated Toastmasters. And we had brainstorming of only 15 minutes and please take a look this is group number one we have i don't know maybe 10 sentences best of group number one we have group number two a lot of ideas group number three they already highlighted the three highlights wonderful and of course group number four so why don't you brainstorm of moments of truth in your club in your area in your division, in your district. And if you wish to be very creative, you can do it like table topics, just like today with or without preparation, it's on you. And what you can also do is download this file. I will also copy, I do this workshop for the fourth time and I will put all four brainstormings together so you will have a huge pool of ideas. Please add your own ideas to them. Select your favorites and rock your club. And now let me show you how I imagine our organization and how I feel most of the times when I visit a club that applies moments of truth. It feels like, I hope you can see it. It feels like that. You're with the right person or right persons in the right environment. You are holding something together, something you created together and something you bring forward together. You have the perfect light and the perfect answer for every question that could appear or will appear. And this is how I understand Toastmasters. Our future starts now. That's the slogan of our District 95 for this year. And thank you very much for creating our future together. Now let's just stay together. And if you have questions or comment, this is your moment. For now, I officially say thank you. And let's stop the recording. Thank you for joining us. Now we have a private session on moments of truth. Goodbye.